Hello everybody, this is Podrig and welcome to episode 7 of The Masquerade. This week I'm going to be reviewing Evoland and as a kind of extension of that I'm going to be talking about kind of the generations of gaming. Well not so much, more about time travel. Yeah, that makes more sense even though time travel isn't possible and what I'm saying doesn't technically make sense. It will later. And yeah, I'll have my weekly shout out. But a lot of it is going to be about time travel and kind of the different, how you view different games at different times of time. So I'm just going to start off by saying that I had quite a good week. Not important and not relevant to gaming in any way, but I'm just saying, I'm just sharing, I had a good week. I got into my next course, so starting next month, I will be back into the education system. And I'll be doing Android development. And hopefully when I finish that course then, I'll be a fully certified Java programmer. Which is a certificate and, you know, it sounds fancy. So hopefully I'll be able to get some sort of a decent job out of that. And yeah, no, it's just, you know, been a generally good week. I'm happy. I've had a, a nice productive day. As you can see all around me, this is the fruits of my days of, of my day of labor. Because I did nothing for the past few days but play Torchlight. But today, I got quite a lot done. Which is all of this. And my whole room in general is all different, so... But I'm not going to show you that. But this part, this is my new studio. This is where I'm going to be recording from now on. And hopefully I'll be able to like add more stuff to it. So, let's get started. This week, I am reviewing Evoland. Or Evoland, however you want to say it. Which is an RPG. It was only released on Steam very recently. And this game is a really cool concept where it basically spans through all different ages of RPGs. Like, you know, you start off with just kind of basic, like, uh, how do I even describe it? You know, like the original Game Boy kind of graphics, you know, the kind of black and white, you know, not very good looking. Well, I mean, it's kind of a HD game, so it still looks clearer. It's not just really bad and blurry. And But basically then you find treasure chests all over the place. And they make everything look better and they change the game mechanics and everything. So it's a game that essentially is constantly evolving. Hence the name Everland. Eva. It even has e excuse me. E V O at the start. And yeah, it, there's a lot of references. I mean it's a game that is just full and full of references to mainly RPGs, but not just RPGs. As you will see in a minute, that it's not only RPG games that it's taking off. It's everything, really. It's just full of pop cu pop culture things that, if you're the kind of person who'd really appreciate this game for just like the kind of, you know, recognizing what all the different things are from, then you'll prob then you'll most likely get every one of the references as you play the game. So it's really enjoyable in that way. This is simply how the game begins. You have no up, you have no down, you don't even have a left. All you have is the right key, but there's a chest. And then it gives you the left key. And it gives you two-dimensional movement. And it opens up the world so you can travel around. As you can tell, it's more original Game Boy style moving around. And then you find another chest. And the screen scrolls with you. Which is very familiar to anyone who's played any of these kind of games. So it's just absolutely brimming with nostalgia. Which, as a fan of nostalgia myself... I would just lap it up. And I just love how this game works. Oh, and you found another chest. And it gives you sound effects. So now... It actually gives you little noises when things happen. And then you basically have to find chests everywhere you go. And that is how the game actually works. And I got smoother scrolling. So now the camera actually follows me. And there are just a small few upgrades that you actually get at the start of the game. And I really don't want to show you much more than that because there's a lot that happens in between now and very much later on in the game. So I don't want to give too much away. One of my probably favorite things about this game, and I haven't really got much of a chance to do it yet, but it's about the going back over areas that you were at before. Like this is very basic graphics, but this rock in front of me will actually it can be destroyed, but just not for ages away. And so you'll actually have to come back to this area later on in the game 
only everything will look totally different because you'll have upgraded the graphics. So maybe it'll look more pre-rendered or something like that. I don't even know yet because I haven't reached that point. There's so much of this game that I haven't even discovered so I don't know how far in advance the graphics are going to get. But I will be coming back to this area later and it's kind of a situation where granted you know how it looks now but you're kind of really curious and actually look forward to see how it's going to look when you return however much later on in the game and it's something that I think is a really interesting concept that yeah it makes the game evolve as you play it but then it makes you revisit areas and so you can see how they've evolved since last time you were there I just everything about this game is just genius to be honest how it's made and if you're a fan of RPGs then and have been for a long time over the ages then this is definitely a treat and for anyone who's played in particular Final Fantasy 7 or 8 will be able to recognize this kind of tone just even based on the music and the pre-rendered background with 3D characters over them. The city is called Aogai City and as you move up and down everything actually scrolls with you. Now I don't want to do too much exploration of this area because I don't want to spoil it but you kind of see the end of it, the screen changes and you actually have to get an upgrade to reduce the loading speeds. Also on a little side note you may very well also recognize my main character's sword right now. You know, it's a pretty obvious reference if you know the game. But even if you don't, I'm not gonna say too much. And with a game of this type, it comes with an overworld. And with every overworld comes random encounters. These are the active time battle full 3D ones. That you just select who you want to attack. And that's what happens then you gain experience. As you can see that one is quite easy because I've leveled up a little bit. This is just, well, a shameless reference to be honest. These big tentacle thingies are plants that shoot fireballs at you. Oops, I wasn't able to attack there. There's also little um, mushroom guys and I'm not even going to say what they're from because based on the look of these they're a slightly more kind of screwed up looking version of a very very familiar character indeed again they're pretty easy to kill but these are more, are more advanced enemies at the moment and in that footage there is so much that I left out of it that you have to play it for yourself I mean, if you think you're the person who really likes RPGs and will kind of enjoy, like, seeing all the different stages of the games as they come along in time, then you'd really, really like it. And even just if you're kind of just a regular RPG fan who likes new and interesting games, not even just for the whole old time's sake, then I think you'd also enjoy it because, you know, just, you know it's not just a gimmick. It's not just a thing where it's like, oh, and now we're going to quickly jump to this game or to, to this section and have no real substance or gameplay in it because there actually is your traditional RPG you know there's grinding you know battles you know looking for secrets buying stuff talking to people not kind of clear cut quests but you know there's a definite progression in it and so for that reason you should just try it because as an all round game it's really good as well and of course you know the deal by now but there will be a description there will be a link to that going down in the description. Now it's time to start explaining what the hell I was talking about time travel. I mean I was thinking, and I tried to make a video about it before but it was horrible, that I'm going to put this down actually because I'm not going to be clicking for a while I hope, because then it's going to be speaking my mind. Imagine if the, play the PlayStation 1 came out when I was about 6. Oh, well, no, I think it came out when I was about five, but we got one when I was about six. My brother got it for his birthday. And, you know, at the time, that was some seriously mind-blowing stuff. Because what I'd seen before that, I suppose, maybe... I can't remember if, the, if I saw an N64 before that. I don't know when they were exactly released. But then, maybe, the original Super, the original Nintendo, or Super Nintendo, possibly... And that was kind of 
pretty much 2D with the odd exception on the Super Nintendo, things like Killer Instinct and uh, Donkey, Kong Con Don <coughs> Donkey Kong Country that were kind of 3D games. So that when the PS3, when the PS1 came out, it was like, holy crap, look at this. This is amazing, playing Gran Turismo. And it's like, you know, looking back now, I have, I still have that game and it just looks crap. But at the, sa at the same time, uh, you know, back then it was like, wow, this is the most cool, amazing, fantastic, mind-blowing thing ever. And then, I mean, how old was I? I suppose I would have been about 11 or 12, maybe, when I got a PS2. I can't remember exactly. It was one Christmas anyway, and I got the PS2 from Santa. Actually, yeah, maybe in that case it was before that, because I don't know if I believed in Santa when I was 12. Um, But yeah, anyway, I got the PlayStation 2. And I got Final Fantasy X with it. And we actually borrowed Grand Theft Auto 3. The first one on PlayStation 2 from my cousin as well. So we also had that for the time being. And I just remember playing it. And it's like, I, I was up all night playing that game. Both of them really, mainly Final Fantasy X. And it was just like, wow, this is even better than the PlayStation 1. How could anything get even better than this? Sorry, this is actually taking a lot longer than I thought. And then I... Then the PlayStation 3, and I think I played one of my friend's house, he, oh, actually no, he got it after me. Well, it was my brother's PlayStation 3 first, and, you know, he got it, and we were playing it, and I was like, holy shit, this is even better than the PlayStation 2, how do we ever think that looked like good, this makes them look like crap. And it's just like, wow, this is fantastic, my brain is going to explode, I can't even remember what game I played first on it. And then that PlayStation 3 stopped working and now I actually have my own PlayStation 3. And now the PlayStation 4 has been announced. And as excited as I am about it, it doesn't look as much more exciting. Maybe that's because I'm older now and I'm just less excitable. Although that's bollocks because I'm still very excitable. Or maybe, I don't know. But, yeah. I don't know, I don't seem that excited about it. I mean, the graphics are great, but no better than a cutscene. I mean, I've, sp I've spoken about this, and I think it was the first episode of The Masquerade, when I was talking about the PlayStation 4 announcement. But anyway, on to the time travel thing, which is what I was trying to start off with in the first... Is imagine... If me, say I hypothetically, or you, you say if you could, like, go back in time, but not just you, as in you could bring some luggage, and... You know, you brought back a PlayStation 3 and, you know, a decent TV as well to have with it. And if you brought it, if I brought a, my PlayStation 3 and my 32-inch HD TV back to the past to maybe six or seven-year-old me when I only had a PlayStation 1 and, you know, things like Rayman and Gran Turismo and maybe Crash Bandicoot. And I just brought these back and I was like, hey, little Podrig, take a look at this shit. Oh no, I probably wouldn't swear at my younger self because I'd want to give I'd want to be a bad influence on myself. But <laughs> if you brought uh, yeah, say you brought those back and you'd be like, "Hey, look at this." And you turn on the PlayStation 3 and you know, they're just like, "This is primitive Padre, you know, playing Pokémon Blue on an original Game Boy and you know, playing Gran Turismo and all this stuff." And then just be like you be you would rock your entire world view. Because then you see this amazing, super futuristic item. And you'd be like, you just couldn't even comprehend it. It'd be like, what is this magic? And then everything up until the PlayStation 3 actually comes out would just be so disappointing, wouldn't it? Well, I, I, that's what I think. But no, just thinking then, imagine. Or even if, say, 10 times, 10 years in the future, Padraig just suddenly goes... And appears right next to me and was like, hey you, check this shit out. And he gives me like a PlayStation 6 and uh, you know, a fucking super, no, it w I was going to say like a big 80 inch TV, but no. He would bring back a like virtual reality thing. You know, like one of these big, really cool headsets that let you be in the game. It'd be like that. He'd give me one of those and I would just be here and just be like, what is this? What is this magic? And he'd be like, take me to the future with you. But then that would be a paradox and I'd end up being crushed by a chandelier or something. And yeah, but imagine that. That would be so amazing. 
because I thought the PlayStation 2, I thought the PlayStation 1 looked good when the PlayStation 1 came out. So imagine seeing a PlayStation 3 or even like, uh, I was going to pull out my DS, but it's not there anymore. I moved it. Imagine like, you know, even having a, a DS, just a regular old original Nintendo DS, not a light, just a big clunky one. And giving that to someone playing a uh, Game Boy. And he'd be like, hey, this thing has two screens. I was like, that's what DS means. And, you know, giving a stylus and, you know, kind of a 3D-ish game on a thing that can only run black and white. Or even a 3DS if you really want to blow their mind. And be like, I'm looking at this and I'm not even wearing glasses. And this was back when red and blue 3D was just after coming out. Stereoscopic or anaglyphic or whatever it is. I don't know. There's too many 3Ds. Imagine that. That would just be crazy. But as a sign of how far we're coming and how it already is kind of the future. I haven't seen it myself. My brother was in a, an electronics shop recently. And he was saying that they have that he, they had set up in there. I think it's Ireland's or that shop or whatever in general. Oh no, the first released. The, the first people on the market that they got. 82 inch? Or it's like 80 inch TV or 82 or 84. That's one of, the, one of those numbers. The low 80s, anyway. It's big fucking TV. Big 80-something inch 3D HD. No, it wasn't even HD. It was Ultra HD. A 3D 4K TV. And I I want to see that. Because I can't begin to imagine how amazing that must look. It must be huge. Probably. I don't even think this room is 82 inches long. I don't even know. And so seeing a TV like that, I would just be like... Holy crap in a hat. You know, just looking at that. And I really just want to go to that shop and just sit there for a day just looking at that TV. Because, I mean, he was saying it looks amazing. But I don't even know how much is going to be made in 4K or Ultra HD. Because, like, you know, I'm happy with full HD. You know, I play games, I play the PlayStation, or whatever. It looks great. If I had that on a huge screen, it would look amazing. I mean, I'd love to play, like, Call of Duty or Wipeout or something on that big-ass TV. But, you know, wouldn't it make it... Wouldn't it be stretched so it would still look kind of grainy? Like when I have the PlayStation 2 on a 32-inch TV. That looks kind of all blurry and stuff. I can imagine it'd be like that. And I doubt they're going to make the PlayStation 4 Ultra HD. Because that would be very... That would be killing their market. That they wouldn't be, like, getting anyone buying it. Because no one would want to get a fucking... Full on H full ultra HD TV as well. So I think 4K at the time that we're in is really pushing it. At a time where 3D TVs are still very new and not everyone has one, they're bringing this out. Oh yeah, that's the clincher. This TV costs twenty four thousand euro. That's you could buy a car for twenty four thousand euro, and you'd probably get a hell of a lot more use out of it, because it's going to be a car that's made for our Irish roads at this time. As opposed to buying a TV that you're not going to be able to watch anything on properly for another five or six years down the line. I mean, really. If I won the lotto, yes, I would instantly spend €24,000 on a big-ass 87-inch TV. Or 84, or whatever the fuck it is, I don't know. But until then, there's no way. But this has been very sidetracky. But I think this is, I'm just very excitable at the moment. But... I mean, just think about that. How do you think you would react? Because I'm just trying to think back to a six-year-old, maybe seven-year-old myself. And I would be amazed because, you know, I've, I wouldn't say I've been into gaming a lot as a child, but definitely I enjoyed the PS1 and that's really got me into it. I mean, I have loved Nintendo as well. And, you know, I started off playing things like Pokemon and Link to the Past. But, I don't know, I think I would get very excited about it. But I don't know how then excited I would be about everything else that came out up until then. Although then again, this is all very unrealistic and purely hypothetical because what are the odds? Although, I mean, sure, even just, not even necessarily PlayStation, but something that I love. Like, I've loved Pokemon since it came out 16 years ago. And does this t-shirt, for example, if I showed this to young 5-year-old, 6-year-old Podrick again and said, Hey, this is a Pokemon t-shirt. I know it's a reference to Chat Noir, but whatever. And they'd be like, that's not a Pokemon. I was like, oh, just you wait. When, in my time, there was roughly about coming up to 700 Pokemon. And they'd be like, no, that's crazy. And I'd be like, 
it is crazy but it's amazing and they'd be like that's not a pokemon i'm i for one don't think pokemon have gone too far i am eagerly awaiting the new pokemon game and i am going to go to the shop when it comes out with bells on and be like hey give me that shit actually i wonder if i can pre-order it yet note to self pre-order pokemon x so that was uh probably got a bit carried away on that big long it wasn't a rant because rants are usually bad but definitely got a bit carried away i'm drinking that's not why i'm carried away though i'm not quite drunk i've only drank about half of this bottle not even so far it's beer by the way it's alcohol you know i'm still not going to say what kind of beer it is but it's something i know it would have been more appropriate to be drinking this last week when i was talking about the power hour but eh what are you gonna do i decided not to have a break last week so yeah what do you think how what um do you like what i've done with the place i think it looks cool i love it this is going to be my new studio and i'm going to be like having all the recordings here as opposed to just sitting in front of that wardrobe with like one poster i just decided to go all out today and be really productive and just put up a crap ton of posters some of which gaming related some of which not in fact i don't think you can even see any of the gaming related posters from where we are not really this one right above my head here i'm trying to point my finger right away this one above jake's head is actually a decidia poster from the decidia strategy guide decidia is the final fantasy fighting game for psp it was okay, but they could have done a hell of a lot better with it. And then this kind of brownie red one right above the Dissidia one is a Super Meat Boy poster. And that's Final Fantasy Dawn of Souls for the Game Boy Advance. I thought I had more gaming posters, but apparently I don't. But yeah, then I got all like miscellaneous because I wanted to have loads more gaming related stuff. But I didn't have enough room over there, so this is much better. I got like my Sackboy and my Charmander and my Yoshi and my Pokeball and... Resident Evil 6 No Hope Left Edition and lots of other crap. It's great. I love it. Uh, yeah, I'm talking a lot. And I'm kind of hoarse, which isn't going to make... So talking a lot isn't going to make me any better. But yeah, no. Plus, I hit my head off the shelf earlier on and I cut my head. So maybe I'm just also kind of reeling from a head injury and I'm actually just talking crap and I think I'm making sense. Oh well. But yeah, no, I can be really super lazy and just relaxy and be all like, bleh. Because you see, what, where my feet are is actually my bed. Because my studio is also my bedroom, as you may have may not have known already. So I can just put my feet up here. And yeah, it's handy as well for playing the PlayStation, because I can sit across the bed and have my feet up. This is just super lazy, but I love it. Anyway, I think it's time to continue on with the show, and... Uh, yeah, I think we're almost done, but, you know, let's let's keep pushing through. Cheers! Ooh, excuse me. I hope you didn't hear that. Cheers! So this week's shout-out goes to A Bead C Start, which is a beadcraft page. They have a Facebook, and there's also an Etsy page. There's also a Twitter account, but I don't think they will use that as much. Because recently it started DMing people with spam. So, I mean, they probably fixed that. But the import, they do most of their business on Facebook. You know, stuff like giveaways. You know, all their advertising. They do a lot of conventions as well. So it's not just, and craft fairs and things like that. So they don't only sell their things. I should probably mention that. They also sell the bead craft things. I have, <clears throat> I haven't got any of their stuff yet. But I'm going to be going to Arcade Con in a few months. And he's going to be setting up a stall there. So I'm definitely going to buy hopefully quite a bit of stuff. Hope there you can get like, you know, coasters. You know, the ones that look like Pokeballs. And, you know, different. It's all pure nerdy stuff. Like, you know, video games, comic books, cartoons, all of this. I mean, recently, you know, I was posting on Facebook. You know, there's all these pictures and they have like... I don't know if it's a full size, but it's pretty big Majora's Mask. Just made out of beads. You know, they're those kind of ones that, you know, you kind of press, I think, with heat. And you kind of just stick them together so they're a solid thing. 
and they have like 3D Zelda chests and everything. They're about that big, but they're really cool. Also, a lot of photo frames that have like you know Pokemon battles and those kind of romantic ones, like you know Mario and Peach and Teenage Mutant Ninja Tur- Hero Turtles ones. There's so much, and he actually works on commission. So if you want something, just tell him what it is, and he'll probably make it. And you know they're reasonably priced. St- set up in Northern Ireland as well. Or the north of Ireland. I don't quite know if it's one of the countries in the north. My Irish geography is atrocious. But. Definitely you should check them out. I don't know if there's international shipping. That's one thing I'm not entirely sure of. Because. I. Well. I'm not international. So. I wouldn't need to know. But I mean you can always ask. I mean he's very friendly. Like I've spoken to him on occasion. Just on Facebook and comments and stuff like that. And yes so seriously you should check them out look at the etsy page i'm going to post links to both of them and if you see what you like especially if you're in the uk because it's i can imagine the postage will be a lot less there or even ireland if i have any irish viewers i don't know if i do if you are irish let me know and when i say irish i mean live in ireland not have irish ancestry or whatever so yeah please let me know and anyway yeah sorry that's irrelevant yeah you should definitely look at their stuff at the very least you know give their page a like share it around if you do know anyone who's who lives nearby because it is some really cool stuff and i can't wait to get my hands on on it yeah so click those links in the description and yeah enjoy the magic i'm assuming you have facebook most people do and yeah like the page and that is all we have time for today so i hope you liked today's episode um please leave a comment if you have anything to say about time travel or anything like that or if you want to let me know how you feel about everland or you know please let me know if you like my new studio room layout thing and yeah i hope you liked the episode please subscribe if you haven't already this page is still this masquerade um page is still very new so i only have like 11 subscribers or something so it's still very young i mean i know my other page had 80 something subscribers but none of those seem to be on this one yet so please i mean you know spread the word i'm i know i'm still small and not even doing this as much for the views but at the same time it'd be nice if people watched it you know so yeah i hope you enjoyed today's episode and you know i'll be up during the week with outtakes actually i won't i will most likely not be doing an episode of the masquerade next masquerade next week because i will actually be away i'll be away from about wednesday to monday next week so there probably will not be a masquerade but 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 i will make it up to you somehow i haven't decided yet but i'll try and make it up to you so yeah i hope you enjoyed today and i'll see all you guys next time bye